Africa is a big continent that more than a billion people call their home. But only 41% of people living in sub-Saharan countries say they use the internet or own an internet-capable device. Which is worrying, as the internet has brought many great things to developed countries like helping businesses grow, education and sharing information along with by far the most important aspect of the internet, this YouTube channel. But I think we take the internet for granted sometimes. Well, at least I know I do. Which makes imagining a country or even an entire continent without widespread internet access pretty difficult. Which is one of the many reasons why SpaceX is building out their satellite internet called Starlink. You see, Starlink could be the solution to this internet problem in Africa. Although there are multiple reasons why no one has succeeded at bringing the entire continent online. So in this video, Video, I will dig deeper into both the opportunities that lie in the African continent as well as the challenges that SpaceX will face there so you can get a better understanding of why Starlink is so important to the African continent. Also, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing, it's free and you can always change your mind. Okay, so to get an understanding of why we haven't seen widespread internet access in Africa yet, we need to first look at the economics. You see, the GDP per capita for sub-Saharan countries, excluding South Africa of course, is around $1600, which probably is the most telltale sign we have as to why only 41% of people have access to the internet. You see, internet doesn't come cheap. And I think we can all agree to that, but it is especially expensive in Africa. And the best way to show that is by comparing what one gigabyte of mobile data costs in comparison to the average income in Africa. Anything below 2% of the average income for it to be affordable. And here we see Africa falling short by quite a margin. Here, one gigabyte of mobile data costs 8% of the average income, which compared to the United States' 2.7% is really expensive. But why is it so expensive? Well, the main reason is probably the fact that the income is so low in Africa that pretty much anything becomes expensive relative to it. But the other reason is that Africans live in rural areas which means you can't lay out fiber optic cables across the entire continent as it would be extremely difficult and most importantly very expensive to do so. Oh, and fiber optic cables are most likely what is allowing you to watch this video right now as only 6% of American households use something other than fiber optic cables to access the internet with. But the reason for that is that most of the developed world lives in what is considered an urban area and fiber optic cables simply make the most sense in areas like these. This is why Africans won't be getting fiber optic cables all over the continent anytime soon. And that is the reason why pretty much all Africans use the only other option they have available, satellite internet. Satellite internet does not have a good reputation and for good reasons. It's often slow, expensive and unreliable. But to understand why, you first need to know how satellite internet traditionally works. You see, for satellite internet, you first need a satellite and those are expensive like the 400 million dollar kind of expensive. And then you need to strap that satellite onto a rocket, shoot it into space and hope it goes into orbit. Which if you choose the right company could cost you a mere 60 million dollars. But if you choose the wrong one, you can expect to pay about 4 times as much. So choose your rockets wisely kids. But even though it's expensive to build the satellite and launch it into orbit, it's only part of the equation to provide internet to a whole continent. You see, you also need to be able to communicate with the satellite. And to do that, you need a UFO on a stick. Which is just really smart science talk for a satellite terminal, so don't worry if you didn't quite get it. But anyway, if you want to use satellite internet, you also need one of these terminals. And, well, the price is definitely interesting, but I don't think expensive is the right word to describe it. Maybe extraordinarily, mind-bogglingly overpriced is the best way to describe it. But SpaceX is changing all of what I just mentioned with Starlink. You remember what I told you about being lucky if you were to only pay 60 million dollars to shoot your satellite into space? You do? Well, only companies that sign a contract with SpaceX, the company behind Starlink, can get that kind of price. Although, 
it is a different story when you are SpaceX, as you can suddenly take advantage of vertical integration. Not only are they building their satellites in-house, they are also shooting them into space on the partially reusable Falcon 9 rocket that they built themselves, which will soon be retired to make room for Starship, the fully reusable rocket that should cost around $2 million to launch. So it seems SpaceX has figured out both the launch cost problem as well as the expensive satellite problem. Although the other satellite internet providers do have one advantage over Starlink which is the fact that they only need one satellite to cover Africa, whereas Starlink is aiming for 12,000 satellites in the shorter term and 42,000 in the long term. And the reason for that is found in what type of orbit these satellites will be in. You see, a traditional telecommunication satellite will be put into what is called a geostationary orbit. What that means is that relative to the Earth's rotation, the satellite stays over the same spot of Earth at all times. It does that by orbiting Earth exactly once every 24 hours, which matches the 24 hours it takes Earth to spin. The reason for doing this is so that you only need one satellite to cover a large area of Earth, like Africa. But the downside to this method is that the satellite will have to be at an extremely high altitude of around 36,000 kilometers or 22,000 miles, which creates enormous latencies of around 250 milliseconds one way or 540 milliseconds for a round trip. And if you are a gamer or a stock trader, you know the importance of latency. Waiting half a second for your action to actually happen is unacceptable. And if you compare those numbers to Starlink's beta numbers, beta numbers, remember that, you can already see why low earth orbit satellites, which is what Starlink will use, is superior to geostationary satellites. Not even considering the fact that these latency numbers will significantly improve over time as more satellites come into orbit. So it seems SpaceX has got the launch and satellite cost as well as the latency nailed down. Now it's just down to pricing for the end consumers, which is where the UFO on a stick comes into play. SpaceX is charging beta testers around $500 for a full kit including the terminal and a Wi-Fi router. But even though that is vastly cheaper than the competition, it's still not anywhere close to where it needs to be to serve the vast majority of Africans. And industry experts have even gone so far as to say that SpaceX is likely losing thousands of dollars on every single kit they sell right now. Which in my opinion is probably true, as they are making such a limited quantity right now that they can't use economies of scale. But even though I do believe it could get cheaper in the long run when you factor in economies of scale, there might be something these experts have overlooked. Which is the fact that SpaceX doesn't need to earn money on these kits. You see, sometimes businesses choose to lose money on a product to get more people to buy it. And that's something we see a lot of companies do, like Sony with their PlayStation, where they actually lose money for every single PlayStation they sell. But you might think, well, if they are losing money, it's a pretty bad business, right? Well, not quite because they earn their money back on the services they provide with the PlayStation. So sometimes it is beneficial to get a product into as many hands as possible at a loss to then generate revenue through the services that that product provides. Which is exactly what I think SpaceX could do with Starlink, as they don't actually need to earn money on these terminals, considering they will get a monthly payment from their customers, which currently is around $99 a month, although that should come down over time as more people are allowed to join the network. And it has to come down a bit for it to be affordable enough for the vast majority of Africans, which I am very confident it will. But I think now is a good time to explain why the focus of this video has been on Africa specifically, as the whole point of this service is that you can use it anywhere. And the reason why I chose to focus on Africa is because I'm worried about one company in particular, Facebook. What? Yeah. Facebook. You see, Facebook has a very monopolistic view on the continent, and they use the Africans' ignorance to the internet to their advantage. How? Well, it's actually quite simple. Pretty much all Africans access the internet via their mobile phones. So what do you do if you want complete control of someone's internet access? You make sure that all the best-selling phones sold in those countries have Facebook pre-installed and no other applications or ways to access the internet. This is why many Africans believe Facebook is the internet and why some of them say they don't use the internet at all. 
even though they use Facebook. But that's not the only thing you need to do when you want to create a monopoly on internet access. No, you also need to lay out an undersea cable around Africa to provide the internet. Look, I'm usually a fan of vertical integration, but I am also a fan of competition, as that will always leave the consumers with better products and services. And I truly dislike the way Facebook is doing things, so I'm really hoping that Starlink can change that. Africa needs solid competition between Facebook and Starlink, as well as many other internet providers to make sure they stop the Africans from thinking of Facebook. Facebook as the internet, and instead think of everything we know it as. And that is why Starlink is so important to Africa.